Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Expand your interests. So, uh, for example... I play football, I am interested in art, I'm interested in fashion, I'm interested in video games, I love Pokemon, I can play basketball, I love gym. Yeah, because you're increasing your chances, Life's, life is a numbers game. How are you going to come across interesting people and people that you can network or people that can help you if you're limiting yourself in terms of what rooms you're going into. The more you're involved and the more different rooms that you're in, the more opportunities you're representing and presenting yourself in. So I totally agree with that. Now, doesn't mean that you can't be obsessed with your career. You can't be driven. All we're saying is expand your interest and your horizon a little bit more because in the long term, this will help your career because you never know who knows someone. And I would say it's the common thing I uh, found out in females is that uh, they don't have interests. They are just party, yeah, live in the moment. And, uh, for me, <laughs> for me, it's boring. <laughs> but that's because if we think about it, they are loved unconditionally. They don't have to bring it into the table if you deep it. Like, whereas men, they are loved conditionally. If you think about it, apart from my of our from our parents, obviously they love their kids unconditionally, but no one else is gonna love us unconditionally. So our love is based based same thing with your friendship, same thing with your partner, whatever it is. Men are always gonna be loved conditionally. You need to bring some form of status or the bag or some form of like um interest or anything into the table and bring food to the table as well, okay, before you even consider like, a good partnership. It's very common in the poor families that uh, the father is getting thrown out from the house because he stops uh, giving the value to the family, that he starts to take more than to give. This uh, this would never happen to a female that the father is throwing out the female from the house because she's not uh, providing value. <laughs> 100%, and, but you've got to understand that... Like, um, in marriages, especially in the Western world, and they're not where they're not traditional or whatever. Eight, 70 to eighty percent of divorces are initiated by females. Fact. That's a proven statistic. It's sad, but it goes to show the reality of you need to be some form of value and you need to serve other people other than yourself. That's just the way life is. By you providing other people, you'll end up providing for yourself it's cliche but this is why people say um in a partnership if you give them a house then give you a home but you get the point right um so you need to be of value if you want to live a fulfilled life the woman should love and trust the man the man should love and trust the god a hundred percent one is done unconditionally and one is done as conditionally, just the way it is, right? Mm. Because at the end of the day, that's the autonomy and that's the, the nature. It's like yin and yang, do you know what I mean? That's just how it works. But a lot of people have kind of lost touch of how um, nature works, if that makes sense. So the last uh, thing uh, that you can do to increase your value is to overcome failures. That's a deep one, and I think that's the most important one. Because the amount of times that you overcome the failure, you increase your value. Mm. Because you will have this backpack of experiences. It's like what they say in football, isn't it? You can't score if you don't shoot. Even if you miss, try again. Adjust your technique. Try again. Try again. Try again. Until it will come. Try me. But how are you going to know? If you're gonna wear so you don't and what works and what doesn't if you don't try and keep failing. A few years ago I had a mental training with uh, one expensive mental coach and uh, 
he gave me an extremely interesting uh, example about uh, about this this concept so there is a hill that is this way first you need to push the rock up 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 and by pushing the rock you need to overcome the failure the doubt the injuries uh, anything you can think about failure you need to overcome it and once you're on the top the rock is going quickly down and this is your success this is here you build the value and there you achieve success success happens slowly than suddenly mm. and that's the best way to explain it it's like an exponential curve it goes like this like a like a graph and then it spikes up like that mm. it's just what I, from my experience and um, from what I've seen around me, but the hardest bit is maintaining it. This is where people, a lot of people fall off. I feel like those who took years and years for it to get it, they can learn to appreciate the success. But if you get fast success, they don't because they haven't been through the struggle and their downfall is a lot worse than the end before the success. Bro, I want people to finally understand that the journey is the success here. Yeah, if you 100%. get through the journey, that's your success. It's not mm -hmm. when you achieve big medals, big trophy, or you take some pictures with the fans. No, it's the journey you get through. This is the success. Your outcome and what you get out of it uh, as the byproduct of the result will be directly linked on your struggle and the journey of the success that you will go through. So the more you double down on that, Everything else will fall as a byproduct naturally. It's not stupid to copy somebody. So if you see somebody presenting a higher value, <laughs> just copy what he does. Just copy his his movements, his body language, his way of uh, speaking, and that can also be like a map for you to to what you need to do increase your value. Exactly. Why change? Why change something that's that really works? Yeah. So I mean, yeah. it's need yeah. to be a hundred percent unique. So really works. This is what I do. I take a bit of mm, that fits exactly the same. That part of this person fits exactly the same as my morals and values. Oh, that fits exactly the same as my um my beliefs, my core beliefs. I'll take a bit of that. 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 And then I'll make some concoction, some mud cocktail, and I'll make it into mine. And I adapt it and I adjust it and I fine tune a little bit here and there. And then it makes that unique um mixture, let's say. And that just makes who you are. People are made up of mixtures of beliefs of the past, current, and future. No one is like, oh, this is just me. You are a a mixture and a and a total accumulation of the of the beliefs and both what you see, what you what you've been through, what you've been instilled into, uh, from your parents and from your environment. Okay. That what makes up your beliefs and that makes up who you are and how you present yourself and your value and your your morals and your, your core beliefs. Okay. So never think that oh I'm a hundred percent unique, but that your unique um personality and unique makeup, let's say, is based on how much of each you, you take. So you take a bit 10% there, 5% there, 1% there. Da, 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 da. Everyone's um different levels of like beliefs that they take is what makes them a unique person. The best example of uh, a person copying another person and achieving uh, success is Kobe Bryant copying uh, Michael Jordan. Mm. It's uh, this is this is the purest example I can give to people is uh, is uh, look at Kobe Bryant. He copied Michael Jordan and uh, made his own legacy that will live forever. Mm. So uh, identify who is in your field and is uh, who you want to be like, and uh, just mm. copy them. You know. Hundred mm, percent. Do you want to add something from you? No, not really. You kind of covered most um, facets of life in terms of how to increase your value. Um, but my main, my main takeaway, sure, struggle, just lean to struggle, okay, and lean to 
if you don't struggle, I'm sorry, but you're failing in that life by default. If you're in an autopilot mode where you're sleepwalking through your life, you're doing your lineage and your family and your future family and your bloodline at the service. Because what are you without your legacy? What are you without value being into your life and to the next life? Do you know what I mean? You're nothing in that sense because if I think your value and it's, it's determined by yourself and the parent, determined by the, your peers around you, okay? That is say greatness is not determined by your own self. You can't say, I'm the best player in the world when no one thinks that. That's just delusional. The best player, the best athlete, the best player in the world is determined by the peers and the fans and the people around it. But that comes through struggle and comes to serving other people. And that's how you create your own value and your own legacy. Mm -hmm. Bring value and legacy into something that people haven't had before. And that can do be from a minute level in a sense of you going into a team and be like, okay, what does this team don't have that I have? From a, from a minor scale to a big scale, whether it be a business, whether it be you being a voice to the community, whatever, and you're standing up for people, you're being the voice of the, of the, the powerless people, whatever it may be. You're bringing value into the world and into the community to support them. If you do, if you can't understand that your value is determined by how you uplift or how you um add value to other people's life, then I'm sorry, but you've lost life. You need to get the most out of situation you are in. So like sometimes uh, you're really deep, uh, deep into into shit in life. So mm. you need to take the most out of your environment and just uh, just try to do everything to increase your value. So, uh, mm. for example, I was working in Shell Station. That's that's low value itself to work in Shell Station. But I was, with hand on my heart, I was trying to be the best shell worker in the history. Mm. I became the best salesman uh, in uh, in one month. Mm. I sold the most uh, cookies in uh, in one month as a as a shell uh, station worker so it's about uh, it's about taking the most out of the environment you are in plus how you do one thing is how you do everything isn't it yeah. pitch is all about um understanding a what is it that i'm not doing and from a value perspective like you always should be like what can i improve on there's no such thing like i can't have improved and everything there's always room for improvement that's from from that aspect Two, so that's from a self aspect. Two, from an outside aspect. Okay, how can I bring value to my manager? How can I bring value to my players? How can I bring value uh, from a teammate? Right? Can I be more courageous? Can I say more positive words? Can I be a leader? Do you know what I mean? Does the team have a leader? Can I be more talkative? Can I? Oh, actually, no one actually puts any balls into the box. Can I do that? I play fullback. Can I put more crosses into the box? Okay. No one still like no one still likes to receive the ball from midfield. Okay. Can I play inverted fullback? Can I receive the ball in between the lines? Do you know what I mean? Like ask yourself questions to try and understand how can I benefit the team? How can I benefit them other than myself? The more you ask yourself questions, the more you'll find answers to what you're looking for and what you need to do. And work yourself. And if if you've done everything that you can and you've gone through that process, then maybe that environment is not for you. Then you can be like, okay, I've done everything in my control, I've done everything I can. This environment, this team, I can't bring any value to. Okay, move on. Next one, move on. And then that will have then you'll have a better understanding of how you can recruit a better team or go into a trial to a team that you think you can bring value in. For example, um, 
from it could be from the simplest thing of um yeah they don't have a right back or their right back just got injured or whatever do you know what I mean and then it can be like okay yeah I can definitely fit in or you can be like actually this right back is very defensive okay maybe I can be defensive yeah I'm good defensively and I'm going to be attacking yeah I can be more of value than their current right back okay so again or you can be like okay their, their full back is a the captain the voice in the room um, the guy whatever then they can be like mm, okay maybe I need to be versatile can I play centre back can I play centre mid can I play a wing back do you know what I mean then you can think of outside the box as well so in a sense you're always I thinking okay how can I add more value how can I add more value how can I be a benefit to the environment that I'm coming in and that can be in football that can be in work that can be in your family that can be any walk of life really um, it's that simple and like I say you doing and you going through that process will only increase your self-respect your your your, your self-value and your self-confidence as well recently I was uh, listening to a story told by Patrick Bet David he said mm. that uh, there was a wealthy guy guy who had money guy who had status guy who had everything and the uh, he really wanted to connect with him. And he was thinking, how can I bring value to this guy if he has everything? And then he studied this guy and he found out that he has a son that no one wants to visit, no one wants to speak to him. Mm. And Patrick decided that he will uh, he will connect with this guy and he will uh, offer him to meet his son. He's coming there and he's offering this and the, the guy is almost crying. The guy's really, really, w could you do this for me? And he said, absolutely, yeah, no problem. He did this, and then he came back to him. Wealthy guy came to him and said, I can do whatever you want from me. I can offer you any contact you want, please. There is a list of three, 300 contacts. Use them and just say say my name. So uh, this, is, this is purely about what you say, about identifying what the team lacks and mm. filling these roles. And it doesn't need to be that, of course, if you are a striker, and your team needs a left back, it doesn't mean that you will go to the coach and say, hey, I can play left back. It's more about seeing these little details, like, for example, uh, the team lacks intensity. I can provide the intensity. Or the team lacks somebody to score from corner kick. Okay, I can provide this value. I can learn how to jump higher and then score the headings. So, uh, yeah, 100% agree with you. As well as that, it could be, oh, yeah, um... I need to provide um, physical presence. Okay, I need to go to the gym. I need to provide... Um, this guy is always making recovery tackles or he's always out of position or he's always winning the ball too close to our goal. Okay, maybe I need to be better tactically than him in terms of my position and to try to win the ball higher up on the pitch. Do you know what I mean? And then you can be like, okay, maybe I need a tactical coach. Maybe I need to watch games more. Maybe I need to kind of have a look at our games and watch the games, get an understanding where we're going wrong. Um, little things like that. And then, then you can lead other people and lead yourself in terms of positioning. Whatever. Find out whatever it is they're lacking because every team is lacking something. No team is perfect, 100%. Otherwise, they'd be in the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? So what I would say is like, find what it is. Do what you can with what you have, with the time that you have, and focus on what's in your control. And once you've done everything, then and only then you can be like, yep, I've done everything. It's not for me. Move on. That's what you can do. Definitely in the under pitch. And ask for feedback always. Just keep asking for feedback. And as you, if you're increasing your value, and as you're increasing your value and you're asking for feedback, you can kind of get a response how they prioritise you, which is what I was saying before. Are they attentive? Are they listening properly? Are they um appreciating your work? Are you are they recognising the changes that you're making for the better for the team? Are they uh, recognising the intensity that you bring, the family bond that you're trying to make with the team? If they're not, then it can be like, okay, I'm doing everything that I can Man, just not giving me good feedback. Okay, maybe this really snuffy. Okay, 
Danny and Norman Daniel can do that. Mm. And you yeah, honestly have to be super honest to yourself all the time. Always lean towards the harsh truth of yourself and the reality around you. Next thing to increase your value on the football pitch. No, next thing in overall to increase your value would be to earn money so you can invest in people that can fill your needs. Let's say that you don't have a parent that you can speak about your performance to or no one was, watches your game. You earn money, you pay the analyst to analyze analyze the game for you and here you go. Mm. So it's important to earn money and invest in invest this in yourself strategically. I agree 100%. Um, investing in yourself modestly. Like, really, be really, like, I wouldn't say modestly, but invest in yourself, like, don't put a limit to how much you invest in yourself, is what I'm trying to say. My mum always says the cheap guy always pays to have more than twice. Do you know what I mean? But really, mm-hmm. you're going for the cheapest option, obviously, you're not going to get the, the best result that you want. You're going for the cheapest option, but if you just go one expensive option, long term, that's going to pay off, because A, you're increasing the value, and B, um, you're paying for their their utmost ex- experience, right? And C, you're gonna re- gain that value in a short period of time. So, like they say, the more you spend time, what doesn't save you, the less time you're gonna spend, um, you being in the highest value person or the highest position in life, okay? So try not to waste time, okay? Like, like I say, propose a short career, invest as much as you can into yourself and into your career, because the more you do that, the more time you have to spend at your playing at a, a, a pro level, for example, let's say, okay? So that's what I would say in terms of advice, like fully don't, don't have a limit to how much you invest in yourself. Um, especially when it comes to your career. When it comes to investing in yourself, uh, my mentor uh, told me interesting, uh, interesting concept. He said that you need to see the things in your life that if you improve, it can give you 10x. For example, let's say you have a groin injury that keeps coming back after one week of trainings. You identify that this is holding your performance, you go to specialist, fix this groin injury, and it's 10xing your your performance on the pitch. Mm. So look out in in every aspect of your life on the things that you can improve, increase, uh, develop to 10x your your own value. And a lot of people don't want to do that because they just want to spend it on instant pleasure. I'd be like, oh, I got a big paycheck. Oh, I want to go out. Oh, I got a big paycheck. Let's go out to a bougie restaurant. Oh, I got a big paycheck. Oh, um, let's put money into a vacation. Let's go to Ibiza or whatever. And it's the same thing every year. Um, and they don't really invest themselves. And then by the time they're like 35 to think, oh, where does my life go? I'm not, I'm not a value. Um, I, I haven't really, I've just been experiencing pleasure, 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 pleasure. And they don't know how to go through a struggle. And then they go through a quarter life crisis, midlife crisis, where they can come to a realization that they've wasted so much time and life is running away from them. And life is getting harder and harder and harder because me and you both know that. Um, the income is only increasing so much over the years, but the interest rate on the expensive is increasing three, four times the rate of the income increasing. So people over time are getting poorer and poorer and poorer. And I believe in like 15, 20 years, they won't be a middle class anymore. It's just gonna be low class, um, poor people, and rich. They're like really, really rich people, okay? Because 
the people that are rich are making profits and making money out of int the interest rates uh, and that making money out of the the expenses they're selling to the poor people and stuff like that. So, um, unless people are are awake, are learning, they are aware of the news around them. They are aware of the the world situations. They are aware and they're constantly educating themselves. Unless they're doing all that, as the least bare minimum, they're gonna just be left behind. Uh, there is uh, one uh, water park uh, close to Warsaw and uh, recently when I was in Poland uh, I was in the dressing room and uh, it was like an experienced dressing room and uh, they spoke about this water park and uh, the low value people they have all been in this water park it's it's like like one of the biggest water water parks in Europe so all the value people has been there But there was one guy who was a uh, high value, a rich guy, who they asked him if he has been in this water park. And he said, no, I never have time for it. Mm. And it, it comes down to that people that are low value, they always seek pleasure. They have time for mm. things like that, for, for water parks. And people mm. that have high value, they just don't have time for it. Because they are constantly working. But that's what I'm saying. Like it all comes down to priorities. And I'm I'm not saying you can't enjoy life. It's like you've got to earn it. You've got to do that, that. Like don't put pleasure at the top of the list. That put mm. it at the bottom of the list. So do all the hard work. Do everything, and then get to the, do the pleasure things. And it will feel like it's earned. If that makes sense, you won't you won't have that guilt of conscience or, or anything like that because you won't. be like oh like people are always gonna be like oh holiday blues and they're or they're like oh now I've gotta go back to work oh, mm. now I've gotta I don't have freedom for that for another year so I can't go holiday till next year oh mm. and then they're and then they're reminiscing and depressed thinking about the holiday they've just been and they stack 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 And then go holiday again. And then uh, they go, ah, he would go gay and then do it again. And I'm like, how? Oh, like, are you not recognizing? Just sacrifice for five years and then have the freedom to do whatever you want. So I mean, mm. oh, it, all, it all comes down to priorities and what you value and what you don't. Yeah. Be strategic in how you position yourself. And especially when you are young, it's. Uh important to do the right steps because if you do the wrong steps and you as you said seek pleasure it can uh, destroy your life let's be mm. honest it's it's finished you can be yeah. 30 years old with three kids see you good yeah. luck good luck fixing it yeah 100 but this is what i mean by like they have to be very intentional with life because if you're not intentional with life life will just happen to you mm. And before you know it, you're like, oh, look at me now. Or you're going to be on, like, government money with, like, five baby mamas. <laughs> still in the hood. Still in the still wearing the same jacket that you had since 16 years old with bleach stains. And you're just, like, in the road, in the streets, life, in the ghetto. making no name for yourself and then you're stuck in this life and then before you know it like yeah you're having kids and then you're setting um you're setting a bad track record for your kids because your kids will feel like oh this is my family's normal this is going to be my normal for the best of your life and then you're just going to build a generational curse do you know what i mean mm -hmm. because the world is the only thing that the kid knows Do you know what I mean? So that becomes their normal. Definitely be intentional with your life. Um, be pur be purposeful. Um, and have a strategy and a plan and a plan of action and how you're gonna attack life mm. and face life and face your fears and face your struggles, face it all. I would say that uh, once I have seen a family, father was uh, obese. Mother was obese, and uh, guess uh, how was the kid? Kid was also obese, 
And the poor kid, like seven years old, he he doesn't know anything else because that's the values he got from the from the house. Mm. And I would say also that uh, get smart quick, get smart as quick as possible, get this knowledge and get yourself out from there, because mm -hmm. uh, it's not about how you start, but it's about how you end. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. One hundred percent. And what I would say to that is, like, do things that other people aren't doing. That's because what's the point following societal norms? You can't expect doing the same thing expecting a different result. It doesn't make sense. If you want something different other than people around you, you've got to do something different. You've got to have a different approach. You've got to do it. You've just got to have life, a different knowledge, a different circle, a different network, a different like everything, a different mindset, a different routine. Do you know what I mean? So like, this is what I mean by you have to be intentional. It has to be strategic. Because if you're just living in autopilot, you're just doing what? You're just being a, sh a sheep. You're just following what everyone else is doing. I could say a, a good tip to younger kids is that, uh, of course, your father is the main role model in your family. And mm. if he's the loser, if he is uh, not uh, not as you would like to be in the, in the future, you need to seek the mentors. You need to seek the people you get inspired from online. Mm. There is no other way around it. You ideally you would like to meet this person, but if if you're just stuck in the in the hood, just look online and just just try to imitate your mentor that you that you saw. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's 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 brutally it's brutal truth. But uh, if uh, if your dad is a loser, you need to you need to find a good role model online. No, obviously because by nature you're just gonna. Have follow your peers like you think yeah yeah that won't happen but believe me it will because it will happen subconsciously that you know yes yeah, same as this kid you know <laughs> he's just doing what his parents 100 percent. and this is part of the reason people say you're never going to spread your wings if you're still under their house it's like never seen the jar where they put like a flea I don't know how a flea can jump like 10 yeah, foot yeah, high. Yeah, yeah. And you put it in a jar with a lid and you keep them there for a month, right? Now you take deep and then they keep the, they'll keep like bouncing smack their heads, be bouncing smack their head. And now they reproduce kids, the flea have reproduced kids. And now there's life instead of a hundred, there's like a thousand of them, right? And they're all bouncing like that. Now you take them out the jar, they only jump about 10 centimeters. But that's all they've been conditioned that one program to do. And that's all they've seen. They don't know their potential and capabilities. So unless you get yourself out of that environment, unless you spread your wings, you're never going to know your true potential and you never know where you're seeing them will be. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.